Let's talk about sustainability. How many of you right now have a working definition of sustainability in your head right now? One of you. OK, good. The first thing we're going to do is advance my slide. Well, let's pause here. So sustainability at its heart, when you think about how to define it, um, is integrated and long-term thinking. And what should be behind me is a beautiful Venn diagram um, of one of the most common definitions of sustainability. The triple bottom line, the three E's, um, where you find that sweet spot where the environment, where economics and equity intersect. And uh, that's my job as Chief of Sustainability for the City of Cleveland, is to work in that area. Um, but what we find is, often in sustainability, we get something that I've nicknamed the theory of trickle-down equity, which is where we work often in environment and economics, and we say, oh, well, if we fix the economy and we fix the environment, it's good for everybody. It floats all boats. And, 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 it, and that touches people, too. People have jobs, and people live in the environment, and that's enough. Um, and I would say that's one of the things that keeps me up at night, is how do we fully integrate equity into sustainability? So for the last 20 years or so, as sustainability has grown in prominence, um, there are now degrees in it. You can get it at uh, higher education institutions. Um, you can get an MBA in it. You can get a Master's of Science in it. Um, I would say for the first 10 years or so, environment was the leading E of sustainability. Followed by um, then this idea of sustainable economic development. And this, dis this disconnect, this disintegration is really um, apparent when you see people refer to the connection between sustainability and equity, not the integration of equity in sustainability. And this just reinforces the perception that sustainability is a movement by and for rich white environmentalists to drive their Prius to Whole Foods and pat themselves on the back, right? <laughs> Full disclosure, I drive a Prius and I often shop at Whole Foods. And there's nothing wrong with that, but I will say we are not going to move the needle on the opportunity to create a more thriving and resilient world for everyone by driving Priuses to Whole Foods. Um, we'll just give up on the visuals and we'll figure this out. Um, so a recent Urban Sustainability Directors Network study uh, surveyed people who do my job all over the United States. And people who work in sustainability define equity in a number of ways. Fair access, opportunity for all. That the costs and benefits of implementing sustainability are fairly distributed to all groups of people that there's full participation of all groups of people and fair results. Um, there's a lot of ways that we talk about it, but when they looked at sustainability directors, um, we're just sort of skirting around the edge of the issue. Um, and interesting enough, the people who are most impacted by government decisions, including sustainability decisions, are historically the people least engaged in making those decisions. That's people of color, people earning a low income, the youth, the elderly, recent immigrants, people with little or no English, the disabled, and the homeless. And a good example of what happens when you leave the third E out of the three E's, when you have a wobbly three-legged stool, which is the metaphor and the image I like to think of, um, a good example of that is transit-oriented development. So one of the things we sustainability people love to do is think about how can we get people to take more transit? How can we make it convenient? How can we make our neighborhoods desirable places to live so people can take buses and trains where they need to go, um, work on location efficiency and low-carbon modes of transit? This is something we get super excited about. But when you forget about that third E in equity, what you find is that TOD, transit-oriented development, leads to gentrification. And you price out the people most reliant on public transit to get to where they need to go. 
Um, and they end up having to move out of the neighborhoods that are most desirable and location efficient, neighborhoods where maybe they, they and their families have lived for decades. So when you're not thinking fully integrated with the three E's of sustainability, if you just lead with environment and economy, then you lose that important third E. Um, so we had a photo contest last year for uh, sustainability in Cleveland, and we said, send us your pictures of what it means to have a good, of what the sustainable world you want to live in is, what it would be like. And it was interesting. We got photos of microchips and servers and piles of dirt and rocks and images of roads and bridges. And what really became clear to me is that people are celebrating the tools and the technology of sustainability, but not the people behind them. And I think this is indicative of a, of a needed cultural shift in how we think about what sustainability is. That it's something that comes from the heart of the people it's intended to serve. Um, and I think we need to expand on what sustainability looks like. We need to expand our definition of who our leaders are, what they look like, and what kinds of actions really constitute sustainability. So if I were to tell an anecdote of uh, Mrs. McGregor in Cleveland, she's about 80 years old, and she participates in a community garden called the Blaine Avenue Community Garden in the Huff neighborhood. And she, I would say, is the most avid recycler, recycler upcycler, reuser I've ever met. Um, she is like a zero waste queen, but she's the unsung hero of Cleveland. Her garden fence is made from upcycled wrought iron bed frames and old fences. And when we think about who we celebrate in sustainability, we have to include the Mrs. McGregors of the world. So here in Cleveland, I don't have all the answers to how to include people in sustainability, how to make that third equal E equally balanced. But I will say, I think that one of the things we should do is um, start by putting people first. Um, so one of the things that we do in Cleveland is we have the Sustainable Cleveland 2019 initiative. And the tagline, which is one of my favorite things about my job, is together we're, we're building a thriving green city on a blue lake. And it's that first word that I think is the most important thing, the together word. Because words make worlds. It's the poetic principle that the vision we have is what we end up striving for. So to have some language around intentional inclusivity, I think, is key in our sustainability work. The mission of Sustainable Cleveland is to design and develop a more thriving and resilient Cleveland region by the year 2019, the last time the Cuyahoga River caught fire would have been 50 years ago by then. And the vision is that we aspire to amaze the world by our transformation. So what are the ways that we do that? Well, we have a set of values that includes words like positivity and kindness, um, a sense of urgency, inclusive, accessible, welcoming, encouraging, um, persistence, determination, courage, and boldness, creativity, innovation, and execution. So words that inspire people, but also show them the part. So we have annual celebration years, and I think the point of that and I think this is something translatable to anyone working in sustainability, is to make it digestible and accessible to people. When you use wonky words like sustainability and greenhouse gas emissions, people's eyes just glaze over. I tell my whole family I do recycling. I'm like, I work on recycling. That's what I do. Because they're like, mm, right? So how do you get people to want to do anything? And sometimes you have to make it digestible for them, bite sides. So um, one of the tools we have are annual celebration years. This is the year of zero waste, and we tell people three things they can do at home, at work, in their community to get involved and to be a champion and a leader in that. So every year between now and 2019, we have a themed year. We host an annual sustainability summit, and I think the lesson around that is creating the space to convene people and invite all sorts of people to be around the table. So we convene about 600 people over two days, and we do um, intentional demographic measurements of sectors and ages and zip codes. Um, and these are the folks that design what sustainability looks like in Cleveland. They form working groups um, that then um, go out to tackle problems and work closely with us in the government. Um, I think there's uh, an opportunity to get creative. 
Um, we host things like photo contests um, to inspire the artists to get involved. Um, and work with people of all ages. So we work with the school systems, um, the metropolitan school system. Um, and every student in each school participates in their annual STEM program, science, tech, engineering, art, and math. So actually it's a STEAM program around our celebration year topic. So um, I guess I would say in conclusion that sustainability is a, or not sustainability, equity fully integrated into sustainability is not a nice to have, it's a must have if we're gonna move the needle on this. Um, and that we need broad and authentic participation and leadership to move the needle on creating the world that we wanna live in and that we wanna leave for people seven generations from now. Thank you.